Hi. Um, this is sort of the final wrap-up for our Sociology 405 class for spring 2012. And instead of giving you a long reading assignment and more discussion board when you're all in the middle of finals, and I'm in the middle of grading, um, I thought I'd just talk to you briefly and sort of wrap up the course based on what we started with, which was this document that I gave you at the very beginning. Um, if you want to go back and refer to that, it's, it's a pretty good wrap-up of the nonprofit game. So I'm just going to kind of talk through it a little bit. Um, I, I make some, a few points, reiterate some of the points that you guys made on your, in your discussion board and in your papers and in your presentations. Um, an organization has to start with a strategic plan. And uh, let, me, let me say first that um, we as individuals should probably also start with our uh, strategic plan, which includes our mission statement, our vision of what the organization is or what we as individuals are meant to be doing here on Earth while we're here. Um, so things that you need to think about, the things that are coming from the outside uh, pressuring that strategic planning process are the needs of the community. You know, what is the need for this organization or this set of services that this organization will provide? Um, who is your population that you're targeting? Um, who are you aiming at in terms of serving a need? Um, so you have to carefully define your audience, who your audience for services are, um, and, and once you know that, then you begin also to think about what it is you're going to be serving them with sooner or later, which ties back into program planning. Um, internal pressures from on the strategic planning process include things like policies and procedures, um, an organizational structure. If you're an organization of one person, um, the structure is easy. It's all you. But that is also very hard in the long run in terms of getting done what you are trying to get done. And again, community need. What is what is the community need and how is my organization going to be serving them? And, and Am I serving them? Which brings us to the final component of assessment, which we haven't talked much about, but I am going to talk about now. Um, other uh, Going down the list, the personnel, uh, which includes the board, it includes staff, it includes your executive director, your director, your program managers, whatever. All of those things are really key. And you guys brought up a lot of good points when you were talking about um, nonprofits have difficulty getting the right staff because they often don't pay a lot. They have trouble often defining what job descriptions really look like because, because they have so few people and everybody's kind of doing everything. Um, that's, that's a bad thing to do, but if you've only got one or two people and there's a wide range of jobs to be done, it is, um, it is what has to be done. And I think about the commercial that's running on television now for, um, I don't know what company it's for, it's Staples, I think, or maybe Office Max or something like that. But it's um, the phone rings and the guy says, Fred, I've got a computer virus. And, and the person who answers the other end on the phone is Fred in a different outfit. And then Fred walks in the door and it's the copiers quit. The Here's my computer. My computer's running slow. And this is happening. The snack machine's broken. And, and all, all of these people are Fred telling Fred about what the problem is. And that's often what it feels like in a nonprofit. Um, there are so few of you doing so much and so many kinds of work that there is often not much uh, latitude, not much room for latitude in your job descriptions. But, um, but it can get overwhelming really fast if you don't have some help. 
Uh, and all of that ties into financial management. And we talked at length about financial management and um, how, how nonprofits get money through uh, fundraising, donations, um, municipalities, um, which is part of fundraising. Uh, writing grants, which is a different kind of fundraising. All of that ties into how organizations get money to deliver the services they're going to deliver. Uh, and including also sales, marketing and sales of products or services. You can be a nonprofit business, a private nonprofit business. And the way you do that is um, you simply roll any profits that you make back into building your business. So you never declare a profit at the end of the year. But you have to be really careful with that because the IRS frowns on uh, you being a profitable business but declaring yourself as a nonprofit. So you have to be really careful with the IRS. So you have an organization, you have a mission and vision, you've hired some staff, hopefully, uh, if you're lucky. Uh, you've got a base of financial support with which to begin your organization. And now you are to the programming phase. What, are, what is our organization actually going to do and how are we going to do that? And we talked a little bit about program planning. Your book does a good job of uh, talking about program planning. And I'm going to give you another resource right now about program planning. So if you are someone who is planning to own your own business, who is planning to work in the public sector, who is planning to be an educator, who is planning to run a nonprofit and develop programming, uh, I really want you to see this book, so I'll, I'll show it to you and then I'll tell you a little bit about it. This is the book. It's called Planning Programs for Adult Learners. The author is Rosemary Caffarella, C-A-F-F-E-R-A-R-E-L-L-A, -E Caffarella. Um, Dr. Caffarella is an adult educator. I took this class when I was in my doctoral program in adult ed. I, this is my Bible. I use this in everything I do, whether it's running workshops, um, whether it's consulting, whether it's um, developing new courses. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I use this book. It has a 12-step model in it that is appropriate for any kind of program development. You can probably buy this book on the internet for about under ten dollars as a used copy. <coughs> Excuse me, this book is still being used I think in the adult ed program at USM. You might could put out an ad and ask for a used copy and pick one up for a couple of bucks from someone. Uh, it is a valuable resource. So you do your program, you are providing services out to your constituents, audience, you're raising money based on what you perceive as the success of your programs, and that leads us to the final component, which is assessment. How do you know your program is successful? Um, you may know that anecdotally, which is the least strong way of knowing how good you're doing something. Uh, someone telling you is what I mean. So you're, you're providing a service to your constituents, to your target audience, and you're hearing back from your target audience. Uh, they call you on the phone or you see them at, at meetings or at the service location. They say, oh, I really like this. This is really good. That's great. And it makes us feel good. And it, it lets us know on a low level that we are doing the right stuff. But in terms of being able to pass that along uh, to your funders, to your donors, to new constituents, it is the least powerful way to do that. Um, so it's good. It's good to collect some quotes from people. That's really good for your marketing and your PR strategies, also for fundraising. But it's not all you need to be doing. You also need to about be evaluating in a formal way your programs. So what is when you go into a program planning, you're always thinking, okay, here's what we're going to do, and here's what the outcome should be from what we do. So intervention, outcome. 
and then you need to measure whether or not that outcome is happening. So that is the evaluation piece that many program developers don't do. And so why don't they do it? Sometimes it's because we don't feel like we know how to do that. It's easy to ask people, well, do you, did you like what we did? Was that good? And, and they say yes or no, and usually people say yes. And, uh, and you go, okay, we did a good job. But if what you did doesn't get you the desired outcome, then have you really done a good job? I mean, maybe people liked your workshop and they thought they liked the venue, they thought it was a great time to do it, it was good information, and they went away and nothing ever changed, nothing ever happened. Remember, this class is about, the name of this class is Nonprofits and Social Change. So the idea is that what we are doing through our nonprofit base is effecting change of some sort. Right? And that's true whether it's education or whether it's um, helping kids who don't get enough food at home to not be hungry while they're at school. Whatever your mission is, the idea is that it will affect some sort of change. So you've got to be sure that as you're building your program, as you're building your organization, that you are always saying, are we accomplishing what we mean to accomplish? And that's the assessment component. So people don't do it because they often don't know how. They often don't know when it's appropriate to, to assess. They don't know, um, they don't understand statistics and they get scared about that. Um, and sometimes people don't assess programs because they're afraid of what they'll hear. You know, you believe so strongly in your idea and your vision and you're passionate about what you're doing. And you feel like if you know what you're doing is right, that's assessment enough, but it's not. And you need to assess despite that fear of what you may hear from other people, right? Okay, so assessment can be a lot of different things, as I said. It can be getting anecdotal information from people. What you think about the program we did today? Or, or do you feel like our services are meeting your needs? That's great. You can also do a more formal, slightly more formal assessment um, and, and do an interview with people so that every person you ask gets asked the same set of questions and you can look at that data over a range of, of um, interviews. You could do a survey, right? And there are lots of ways to do surveys, including electronic surveys and things like that. You always have to... Um, go back to who is my audience and uh, how am I serving them. So if you're serving people who might not have access to computer technology, then giving them an electronic survey is probably not your best method of getting information. Um, however, if you're, if you're providing a service to people that you know work with computers every day, then sending them an electronic survey is probably a good way to get some information from them. So you always have to go back to who is my target audience, how am I going to get information out of these people. If your programming is meant to effect change over a period of time, you're going to have to be able to go and follow up with those people and see if you actually affect it, if, if what you did, what you served them, actually provided that change in the long run. So if you say in five years, 50% of my participants in year one will have done X, Y, Z, you've got to go back in five years and talk to those people or touch them in some way and find out if that was true or not. And that's how you know if your programming is effective. So, um, a few things, um, just to in closing, as you are thinking about going out into the nonprofit world, either as an employee of a nonprofit or starting your own nonprofit, always remember a couple of things. The most common reason for small businesses failing in the first year, and something like 75% of small businesses fail in their first year, the reason for that is that they're underfunded. 
they start on a shoestring and believe they will become money making and money generating very quickly. Um, that is the most common reason for failure. It's not because your vision is bad or your strategic planning was bad. Although, if you don't plan for how you're going to get money, it's a pretty serious flaw in your strategic plan. And you guys really discussed that and had good conversations about that. Um, another reason that nonprofits struggle, not always fail, but struggle, is that over time um, they experience mission drift. And that's a um, term. Um, meant to denote that sometimes we forget our primary purpose for having this nonprofit and instead instead we chase uh, rabbit trails for money so that we can stay in existence. And that is a huge um, problem for nonprofits because you have to have dollars in order to continue to serve and do the mission you set out to do. But you're so, you're always finding um, the money. Finding the money is difficult, and um, not everyone has the same vision you do. And but their vision may be similar, but not quite. But you go, well, that's close enough, and you chase money down that path. And then suddenly you find yourself instead of instead of being the organization that you started as you're off to the left, or you're off to the right, or you're circling your original mission and you've become something different than what you intended it to be, or what your board intended it to be. So you have to be very careful about that and, and stay true to your mission. Now that doesn't mean your mission can't change, uh, and indeed that's part of strategic planning is to assess your strategic plan on an ongoing basis. Are we still on target with our mission? Does our mission need to shift a little bit left or right? Do, and I'm not talking politically, I'm just saying move. Um, so assessment feeds back into every component. Are we spending our money well? How's our marketing campaign for this going? Right? You assess that. You are always looking at how you're doing and how you can improve. And that's really all assessment is about. It's nothing to be afraid of. I used to joke um, when I was running a nonprofit through a community college, we got audited once a year and I used to welcome my auditors and and people in our financial offices would get really freaked out about being audited. And I said, well, this is not the IRS. These are people who want to make sure we're spending our money in an appropriate way to serve our clients. I know I'm doing that. I know I'm keeping the records. And if I'm not doing something right, their job is to help me do it better. So my audit was a kind of feedback for me to make sure I was on target with the finances. And so I welcome those people coming in. I, sometimes they told me I was doing stuff wrong, but that was a way to help me correct it so that I didn't get in trouble down the road somewhere um, financially. So I was always happy to see those people come. And I hope you will look at assessment that way. Assessment is an opportunity to grow and develop as an organization. So if you don't do it, you're going to die. Your organization will die. Your program will die because you won't really know you're doing what you mean to do, okay? So, um, again, Rosemary Caffarella, trust me, this is a book, this is a book that will um, help you throughout your life, no matter whether you're planning a wedding or whether you're a baby shower or, um, you know, a multi-million dollar corporate plan. Uh, this book will help you do that. So it's been a pleasure this semester. You guys have amazing vision for um, for nonprofits. Uh, the discussions, most of the discussions on the discussion boards were incredibly enlightening for me. Um, I enjoyed that. 
So thank you for bearing with me this semester. Thank you for participating. Uh, I'm in the middle now of grading your exam or your final papers. I have your all your presentations are graded now and I also have your participation grade posted. So now it's just final papers and then assigning the final grade. Uh, remember that my policy is you, everybody begins with an A and it's yours to keep or lose. Um, so think about that as you're seeing what your scores are. Um, thank you. I'll, obviously, I'm going to be in my office through uh, the day grades are posted. So if you need anything, give me an email or come by. And um, if not, then good luck on your all your finals and uh, have a wonderful semester break. Thank you. Bye.